All right, what's up, VC? Come on, throw those symbols. All right, you know today I thought I'd mix it up. I'm having some hot tea, you know what I mean? Just gotta change it up. I can't have coffee all the time. You know? can. All right, so I'm listening, I'm just listening, you know? So the wheels are turning, the burning. And um, so this Pat Metheny rap album that came out, I talked about it already, but I hadn't played it in a little while. I played it today, and gosh damn. And the, what bothered me at first when I heard about this album, well, before it came out, when they were showing like the preview commercial, is that he doesn't play on this album. He composed all this neat music for the L.A. Guitar Quartet, Los Angeles Guitar Quartet. And so, oh, so I was like, you know what, I'm just a huge fan of Pat Metheny, so all right, cool, he wrote some music out, like Beethoven left for us. But he does play on the very last song where he pulls out the 42 string guitar and it's a one side killer song. But um, as I'm listening to this, it is genius. It is so good. And um, he said what he did is he had put a picture of each guitar player that's in the quartet and he had kind of already listened to their style, knew how each one played, and he wrote each one of their parts according to their style. And, and, um, man, it's kind of like, you hear a horn section, you don't usually hear a whole guitar section. I mean, like, Skinner, you get three guitars, so they're almost there. But a full quartet, which is usually done with, like, classical stuff. And what's crazy is, most jazz cats have the chops to play classical. They just don't like the fact that classical is so cemented in stones. They don't improvise, usually. So... You know, and classical people are like, you know, can a, can a jazz person actually remember something and play the same every time? And yes, they can. And, um, and they know that. Pat Metheny is like, this album definitely is blending classical vibes with jazz in a very clever way. Almost renaissance at times. But it's cool that he doesn't like, there's, he, he's all over the map as far as like, I mean, he's not doing anything like funky at her. But I know he's got it in the system. But as a guitarist and a songwriter, Pavadini is. We're very lucky to have him. We're lucky to have all these musicians. It's crazy. If it wasn't for all this cool music, um, the world would be such a. There wouldn't even be a world. It would just. That would be. Uh, be weird. It wouldn't even happen. There's no way. Music was like the oldest thing to ever happen. Somebody was walking and probably heard their feet making a rhythm of a line started hearing a pattern or even just freaking clapping your hands I mean it's the oldest thing in time it's, it's like so it's crazy but the, the, the he, Pat Metheny is a true legend and if you haven't listened to him uh, go check out as Wichita Falls um, off ramp any Pat Metheny work a lot of his stuff though from like 75 to 1980 and he's on other records like he's on the Gary Burton Quintet album I have. I didn't even realize that for a long time. But this album's totally killer. And it's all acoustic. Like I said, it's on Island String. The LA Guitar Quartet. But it is super good. Tons of feeling. I got this record a while back. I was playing it earlier today. Super good. It's the Bob Brookmeyer in France. And it's Stan Getz, Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, Gary Burton, and Elvin Jones. Killer album. And I got this for only four bucks. And it's it's an original edition. I don't know why it's in good condition. Only a couple little small cracks and pops, but the way it should be for this age. It's the, the Double Eye Columbia. Really good record. Be on the lookout for this. I feel like uh, you'll probably find a better version in your jazz section for probably like 10 bucks because for whatever reason people haven't been talking about it. But, anyways, so this has nothing really to do with Pat Metheny, but it's an album. I was just wanted to talk about, and it's uh, Keith Jarrett, um, Eyes of the Heart. And it's kind of an album you don't see that often by Keith Jarrett. I'm a huge fan of Keith Jarrett. I went um, went through a huge uh, phase where I was just listening to tons of that stuff for a long time, to all just him. But um, and what's ironic is I thought he was a, when I heard someone else talk about him, this other guitar player, Sean Lane, that I really look up to, who's not around anymore. He would say in interviews, oh, you know, Keith Jarrett is, I'm a huge fan of Keith Jarrett. And I thought he was saying Keith Jarrett. 
So I went around to record stores asking, yeah, do you have this guitar player on vinyl called Keith Jared? And finally, a record store that had some brains was like, do you mean Keith Jarrett, the piano, the pianist? And I was like, oh, it probably is because Sean Lane listened also to Art Tatum a lot. So I was like, oh my gosh, he's not a guitar player, he's a piano player. This is when I was really young. So, found out he's a piano player, got a bunch of his stuff. And one time we were in Lake Tahoe, we were playing a show at Whiskey Dicks. And my uh, bass player, Hafer State, he owns a cabin in Lake Tahoe on the South Shore. So we would go there every now and then. And uh, played Whiskey Dicks on New Year's Eve one time, and it was fucking crazy. But that's a whole other episode. But anyways, there's a record store right there across from Whiskey Dicks. And uh, Randy, my bass player, said it's still there, apparently. So if you're in that area, go check it out. It's kind of a total mess. This guy has a huge collection, collection but you will find... I've dug through there and found a few things. But the thing the most... I walked in there. I'm pretty sure it's like the first time I walked in there. And I seen this lane on top. You know what I mean? A uh, stack. And I so I right away, I was like, oh, I'm going to get that. But since it was right there, there was no one in the store. And no, it looked like there was no one going to come in the store for a while. It's me and this old dude, my bass player... Well, the dude seen us in there, so he kind of got excited and started putting records away. He puts this away somewhere. And I turn around after I kind of, I'm like, hey, man, where was that Keith Jarrett? I wanted to get that, you know? It's, and then he, did, he didn't even remember. <laughs> He's like, what Keith Jarrett? And I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm like ripping now this store apart, trying to find this damn record. Because I, you know what I mean? It's Keith Jarrett I had never seen. And uh, I found it, luckily. And then he, we were both kind of laughing about it. You know, I was going to be grumpy about it, but I was like kind of on borderline being grumpy because I was like, uh, dude, I mean, you're not helping your customers. But in his defense, he was totally just trying to, you know, I mean, he was like, oh, shit, let's put some shit away. You know, let me make my store look good. But I like that his store was messy. It was just a shit. It's a book. And I'm pretty sure it's a book and record store. But uh, this the song, it's really qu crazy because you hear this Eyes of the Heart Part 1. Um, it's killer. 17 minute long song. But I hear this horn playing. This crazy killer horn playing. So I'm like, who's the horn player? Well, it does. You got Dewey Redman, who's playing tenor saxophone, tambourine, and um, maracas. But Keith Jarrett is playing soprano saxophone. And Aussie drum, anyways. And piano and tambourine. But I didn't even know Keith Jarrett could play soprano saxophone. So... This is a really good record. Just go stream the song, Eyes of the Heart, part one. And do part two, but part one. Oh, and you know what's really weird? It's one of those ones, there's a side three, and there's some music on the left side. Yeah, so strange. It's always... <laughs> it's so... Nothing, not a bonus track, nothing. And it's like, it looks like there's even... It's not, but it's like a, it looks like there's grooves. I mean, is there some secret song on here? Anyways, only a third side. That's always strange to me. And that's all. That's, that happens. I was like, I think I had a Ramones album that I sold back to the store because it, I, um, it was a live Ramones, the record store day one. I just knew I was going to play it a bunch. So I knew someone would want to have that way more than me. So I had to, I had to give it up. And nothing against the Ramones. I totally respect the Ramones. They're legends. But anyways. So go check this out. I'm pretty sure you can find this one. Uh, I got it five bucks. And it's on the ECM. And ECM, this one is a gatefold. Like I said, it's a three-sider. And this came out in 1979. It seems like from 74 to 1983, like ECM was just putting out fire. There wasn't a band that sucked on this label during that time. I don't think there's any band that sucks personally, but I think it might to some people's ears. But you gotta, you gotta respect the efforts. Anyways, all right, guys. I could ramble on. I just love talking vinyl. Like I mean, I don't have any kids. I'm not married. I'm a full-time musician. Uh, I'm thankful enough that I get to do it for a living. I also teach I teach guitar and um, beginning piano. I teach piano till I feel like the student needs to go to like if somebody's dedicated I taught this old lady and she was truly dedicated. She bought a keyboard to take on vacations with her and she just started ripping on piano and it, um, lived out in the middle of a cornfield and I would uh, 
you know, uh, it was about, yeah, six months, six eight months, I had to cut her loose. I said, yeah, it's time to find you the next level piano teacher so you can start playing some crazy ass. And I, I just teach them, I teach you how to cyber music and then I teach them how to improvise a little bit of stuff and kind of how to write your own little riffs and then um, have, keep, you know, have fun. But, uh, Full-time musician, I have, so, you know what I mean, I just listen to music, I'm trying to do music, I don't have any gigs in the daytime or whatnot, so, and then, uh, got rehearsed, we, uh, I played Friday and Saturday, and then was in the studio on Monday, um, for the Joel and the Box of Chocolates, and then, uh, I was supposed to play Saturday, I was supposed to play solo last night, but got double booked, so I ended up busking, uh, because I, I gotta go get my fix, and then, um, practice tonight with the blues band and tomorrow night we're playing out in taylor texas yeah so anyways gonna have a great time hopefully it doesn't rain because it's an outdoor gig so uh fingers crossed not home with all that weird uh, weird shit that we do um now my needle's spinning on dead space my dog is just chewing away on her toy so laters like and subscribe if you enjoy these crazy ramblings um i'm finding you know um I was at 111 and just that was my peak. I think that's I won't ever break that. You know what I mean? So shout out to 111. It was nice being there for a couple hours. Uh, stay positive. Play lots of vinyl. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.